Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, haven't made a video since last fall. It is now January, so hopefully everyone had a good Thanksgiving, good Christmas, a good New Year's and all that. Um, this morning, right before I went to bed, I read that Microsoft has bought out Activision Blizzard for 80 or is it 68 billion, like almost around 70 billion dollars, which is a freak load of money. So I figured we would talk about it. What better way than to play Overwatch on the Nintendo Switch? Because this is the console that I have it on. And we will do a quick play. Now I'm not really good at this, but you know, I, I enjoy it. We got crossplay enabled and we'll do a practice kind of a skirmish game as we're playing. And I think the last game I or last time I played an Activision Blizzard game was when I did that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 video that I did last last summer or last spring. And shortly after that, uh, let's play Ash. Ash is kind of a simple player to play and still kind of has some range. Um, anyway, uh, it was kind of the last uh, Activision Blizzard game I played because. Activision Blizzard has had some pretty serious sexual harassment claims, and this is kind of my main problem with them right now. And usually when you, I read those things, I, I take them with a grain of salt, you know, I, I believe in presumption of innocence, kind of wait until more news comes out and see how, like, trials and lawsuits go before I pass judgment, because, you know, it can be true, it can be false, it can be all staged and whatnot. But these have been pretty numerous, and there was a, a female Blizzard employee that committed suicide over this, and the California District, uh, or no, the California Department of Justice has been investigating Activision Blizzard. So this is kind of one of those things like, you know what, I do not feel comfortable playing any Activision Blizzard games. Um, I actually, I uninstalled it from the Switch. I only reinstalled it just to make this video. So I haven't played this game since last spring or summer. Um, but with uh, Microsoft buying them out, and I think they've gotten rid of about 40 employees. I, I think the CEO is still kind of responsible. I, I don't really know too much facts on it. I haven't been reading up on it too much lately. But from my understanding, and feel free to fact check me and post down in the comments if you want to, but... Um, the when employees would bring this up they would uh bring it to the hr department and hr would kind of sweep it under the rug and possibly even the ceo swept it under the rug um again feel free to fact check me and post it down in the comments below but i'm hoping now that microsoft has bought them out they will uh clean house get rid of anyone and everyone um i mean people who are like high up on the food chain up there might get like some pretty significant payoff because of corporate contracts and stuff like that but with uh california district of, uh our california department of justice investigating them hopefully there will be some criminal charges i'm assuming they're guilty you know for all we know this is about 100 false claims probably not but you, know, you never know uh but yeah i mean and here's the thing if it turns out to be like a huge massive hoax which it likely isn't but you know just if it is then i will happily admit that i'm wrong and go buy some activision and some blizzard games but let's face it i'm that this is probably unfortunately a pretty true thing since somebody did commit suicide and lose their life over this so but anyway yeah hopefully microsoft will clean house so it's a very very big acquisition and that's kind of my hope in this whole thing um a lot of people i don't know a lot of people i've seen like a few people comment that maybe this might open up microsoft to um some antitrust issues you know owning so many video game companies because you know they've they've owned quite a they own quite a bit now they've bought out a lot like bethesda for an example for example uh, bethesda i'm concerned about because Bethesda, when the Switch came out, they were a huge supporter of the Nintendo Switch. So, 
Of course, if you watch any of my other videos, you know I suck when I'm trying to play and, uh, and video capture or stream at the same time. And I'm also playing this on a controller, which this is more of a mouse and keyboard game, but I don't care. I still like playing with a controller. So, And it's also the Overwatch on Switch has motion controls as well. I don't have them set up on this. Usually when I play an FPS game on Switch with motion controls, it's when I'm playing in handheld. So... But anyway, I mean, this this could potentially make um, all the all or most of the Activision and Blizzard IP possibly Xbox exclusive, or at least it opens a door for it. I don't think that'll happen, but you know, it, it might. I mean, we all the future Call of Duty games, which those games have been not very good lately, but all those games could be exclusive to Xbox consoles. Um, Overwatch 2, which is coming out, which is, you know, it's likely going to come out on all systems, but, you know, a uh, sequel to that, uh, StarCraft, uh, all that could be Xbox ex exclusive. Now, StarCraft is likely going to be, you know, PC game and stuff like that, but, you know, it might open the door for games like StarCraft or World of Warcraft to come to Xbox as well. Um, World of Warcraft, of course, is more of a mouse and keyboard game. Um, if you've watched my channel about like two or three years ago, I forget exactly when it was, but I installed this pretty significant World of Warcraft mod where you actually play the game with a controller. And it was surprisingly very playable. I mean, it still had its minor flaws here and there, but I was surprised how playable it was. So, if, if they revamped that game a little bit, kind of simplified it a little bit and kind of um, rebuilt the game around controllers. I mean, you, I shouldn't say rebuild because it makes it sound like um, it wouldn't support mouse and keyboard anymore, but basically modify the game to natively support controllers. I mean, it, it would be easily doable. Um, if you don't think so, then you know, check out that Check out the video I did where I played World of Warcraft with a controller, and I'll I'll try to remember to post it, post a link down that. below. But yeah, it was I was surprised how good that was. But um, anyway, uh, I've been jokingly saying since you know, for whatever reason, Activision has not brought a Call of Duty game on the Nintendo Switch. They brought a Call of Duty game to about every console in the past, you know, DS, the Wii, the PSP, uh, Vita. Uh, but for whatever reason, not the Switch. But, you know, I've been joking that now that Microsoft owns Activision, uh, maybe now we'll get a Call of Duty game on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Since it seems like uh, Microsoft doesn't have an issue with putting IP on the Nintendo Switch. Not like they put Halo on it, but, you know, I just thought it was a funny joke. So, anyway. Uh, anyway, now... Might as well talk about Overwatch on the Nintendo Switch. As you can see, it only runs at 30 frames per second. When the game came out, um, it did have some performance issues, like some stability issues. But uh, I'm recording at night. got to make sure I don't wake up people in the house. Um, it did have some performance uh, stability issues. Like it kind of went down like 20 to 25 frames per second. Uh, at least that's what some of the, the videos, like the review videos, uh, were showing. But they did do a patch, I want to say like three weeks or a couple months after its release, somewhere somewhere in that ballpark. And it made the game a little more stable, so it runs pretty good on Nintendo Switch. Um, I bought this game when it was on sale, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's 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 pretty good. It's it's definitely enjoyable. And Nintendo Switch, you know, of course, kind of has that void of online first-person shooters, so that's kind of why I wanted this game. Uh, Apex Legends has been fun to play on Nintendo Switch, so that's kind of filled that void a little bit. Wish the performance was a little better on that game, which I kind of talked about that in a previous video. Um, but if you want a game that's like Overwatch but is very good, has very good frame rate on Nintendo Switch, download Paladins. It's it's a free to play game. It plays at nati native 60 frames per second on the Nintendo Switch, and it still looks good. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that's a really awesome game to play on Nintendo Switch, and it's free to play. Ooh, found a game. But again, you know, if if you like Overwatch before Overwatch, this is still fun to play on Nintendo Switch. I like them both. Graphics look a little bit better on this. Uh, frame rate is much better on Paladins. Both games are fantastic. Um, I think Paladins kind of has like a little more 
detail in terms of like the gameplay and characters balance and all all that kind of stuff but um, again i'm not like a pro overwatch player or anything like that but they did uh they did add crossplay to this game now so you can actually uh I, I don't know if it's like with the party matchmaking or anything my like that, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, I I love crossplay. I mean, I, I think it's one of the best things to come out with online games. The only problem with uh, crossplay is when there's crossplay with PC players, it opens up the possibility of uh, cheaters, and you're seeing a lot of games now kind of have that problem. Like Call of Duty Warzone's a perfect example, unfortunately. Which it's just gonna kind of make online requirements, you know, a little bit, a little bit heavier in the future with games. So let's see how good I can do here. <laughs> if memory serves me correctly, I think this was the Project Titan game that Blizzard was uh, working on. It was supposed to be like the the World of Warcraft successor or something like that. I, I just, I don't, I think it was Project Titan. It was like some big game they were planning and then they eventually just canceled it because they found out the game really wasn't that fun. And then they basically took the assets from that and made this. I might be completely wrong, so feel free to correct me in the comments below. So for whatever reason, I like playing sniper rifles in first person shooters like Halo and whatnot, but I'm not very good with sniper characters in this game. So Ash is a good compromise. She's not a sniper, but she's a ranged character. Of course, you got like your healer characters and your tank characters. Your healers can attack, but they're still, you know, healing their partners. Um, your tank characters take a lot more damage. Just like Paladins, which this game came before Paladins, if I remember correctly. And, you know, again, the cool thing about Paladins is it's free. <laughs> this game you gotta buy. So. I forget the name of the character in Paladins, but that healer that's like a giant tree. <laughs> That's a character I like to play a lot in Paladins. I don't really like playing healer characters in games like this that much, but uh, that character I really like. Mainly because uh, his range attacks are more powerful than up close attacks. That and for whatever reason, whenever I'm in matchmaking, not a lot of characters want to play a healer in Paladins for whatever reason. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious, you know, with the Blizzard, Microsoft acquiring Activision Blizzard, because, I mean, you got some really serious IP, you got, you know, StarCraft, World of Warcraft, uh, Call of Duties, I mean, those are the big names right there, and of course Overwatch. Um, we'll probably see Overwatch on Game Pass now, so if you got an Xbox One or Xbox Series, uh, you'll likely see this game supported on that now, so that'd be kind of cool. Um, I, I'm curious if we'll see some kind of StarCraft game on the Xbox. If you've ever played Halo Wars, and I absolutely love Halo Wars, that game proves that you can have a real-time strategy game on a console. They right? it, it, it did a really good job putting that on a console. So with a game like StarCraft, you would have to completely revamp the interface for a controller setting. So, you know, just, just like World of, you would have to for World of Warcraft. But, um, yeah, I mean, that'd be a lot of fun. I mean, if they, if they could revamp it and make it successful, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, we haven't really had a StarCraft game on a console since the very first one on Nintendo 64. And even though uh, you didn't quite have that resolution, you had to take a resolution downgrade to play it on Nintendo 64, and you couldn't play it, like, network with a bunch of people, it did have the benefit of a split screen play, so you can play with another player on the same TV. That was kind of cool. And I played the game before too. It was actually a lot of fun to play on Nintendo 64. 
And of course he had a, a Warcraft 2 on PlayStation 1, I think. I think I tried that once. It was okay. I mean, it wasn't wasn't great, but it was it was all right. I guess if you didn't have a PC back in the day that would play Warcraft 2, it was at least a way to play it. Cuz I remember when Warcraft 2 came out, you had it required, I don't want to say high-end PC, but a high-end PC that my friends and I couldn't really afford at the time, you know, cuz you know, we were in high school and it required a PC with uh, 8 megs, not gigs, 8 megs of RAM. And that was kind of the first game to require a lot of RAM back then. So I only knew of one person in my math class that had a PC to, that would do that, and he had to fork over like a, a good couple hundred bucks. But then, you know, kind of a year later, you know, PCs started to be sold in, in stores with that much RAM in it. Like the IBM Activa and whatnot, Windows 95 PCs. So you kind of started to see that stuff. But you know, when the game came out, you know, it was a little hard to play that stuff. I mean, crap, my P my first PC only had two megs of RAM. I had to spend a couple hundred dollars to upgrade it to six so I can play uh, the first Warcraft and Doom and Doom 2 and whatnot. Then I used this. Uh, program on my PC called SoftRAM. It basically um, used your hard drive as like extended RAM or some some weird thing like that. It was if you're if a software had to access more than your RAM more than more RAM than you actually had it you know it made it really really sluggish because it was basically like virtual RAM but you know it still worked. I was still able to play War, uh, Warcraft 2 on, you know, PC with only 6 megs of RAM. Oh, I got him. <laughs> so. But yeah, this is a game that um, when I go to work and I, on my lunch break, uh, I like to play on my Switch during my lunch break. Uh, my... The Wi-Fi at my work has some really strict uh, firewalls. So, for whatever reason, games on the Nintendo Switch that go through Nintendo servers, like, you know, just anything that requires Nintendo Online, um, does not work on the Nintendo Switch. Like, I can't not play Mario Kart. But this I can play fine. Uh, this, uh, Paladins, um, Fortnite, and Apex Legends I can play just fine. Getting on my nerves. Enemy turret ahead. Let's see, teleport? Uh... Oh, oops. <laughs> I did it backwards. <laughs> so yeah, Microsoft bought Activision for six point or sixty eight billion dollars. Um, you know, with with the ongoing sexual harassment allegations and investigations, um, you have Call of Duty games, the later ones, not really doing too well. The their uh, their battle royale game is played with cheaters, so their stock value. I, I last I checked, it was on decline. I don't know if it ever went up or not, but last I checked was about a month ago, and it was kind of on a slow decline. Probably should check that out, actually. But, actually, since I'm dead... And, oh, no, never mind. Let's try and open up a window on the PC I'm capturing on, but... We got a new PC. We got a laptop we bought on Black Friday. It was a Samsung laptop, and... We got it for eight hundred dollars at Best Buy, and it's a smoking deal for the specs. So I finally, finally, not using that uh, that uh, Intel i7 3770 PC that I've been using for the last eight or nine years. Doesn't have a onboard, or it's relying on the onboard video, so it doesn't have like a dedicated graphics card, which is fine. I, I really don't use that much PC. I don't do that much PC gaming anymore, anyways. 
And if I do, I'll probably re I'll probably rely on like GeForce Now or something. Or most of the PC games I own, with the exception of maybe PUBG, um, are older games. So they actually run on here pretty decently anyway on low settings. I actually played Destiny 2 on it with like really low settings on the lowest. And it still performed at 60 frames per second and looked good. I mean, it still looked great. So I was actually surprised. So if I ever got back into Destiny 2, um, I could play it on GeForce Now. And then if I'm tra traveling, I can play it on minimum si <coughs> Excuse me. I can play it on minimum settings if the Wi-Fi if the Wi-Fi on that is not that good. So yeah, that's kind of cool. And it's really hard to pick up a, a PC now with uh, with the whole chip shortage and everything, or PC parts or graphics cards. But you know, laptops. You know, I've seen laptops in pretty good supply. Like every time I go to Costco, they always have a PC gaming laptop. Uh, for a decent price with good specs. They're pretty bulky though, you know, like a like, 17 uh, inch laptop. You know, the laptop we got is only like 13 or 14 inches. And it's a two in one, so it's it's good size, it's small, it's thin, you can fold it into a tablet. It's very versatile. And I like my portable devices to be small, because you know, when you travel, it's just easier to, you know, easier to travel with. Let's see, which way am I facing? Oh, that's the way it came from. <laughs> I am not as familiar with this game as other people are. Of course, I am playing on the Nintendo Pro Controller here. See, if I was playing on mouse and keyboard, I probably would have had that guy dead with, with the headshots. But you know, if, if you got like a, a group of friends that play this game a lot and you just need one more person, you know, you got to switch. Play it on Switch. You know, Switch Lite costs, what, 200 bucks? So, but yeah, my, my main concern, and I kind of touched up on it when I talked about the Bethesda acquisition is my main concern with Microsoft acquiring so many studios is you know third-party support um, will all these become exclusives because Bethesda was a big supporter of Nintendo Switch when it launched I mean if it wasn't for Bethesda games playing on Nintendo Switch like primarily uh, the, uh, 2016 Doom I may not have bought a Nintendo Switch I certainly wouldn't have bought one when I did but um, that was a game that made me go out and buy a Nintendo Switch and, you know, absolutely love this thing. But, um, I mean, are these games going to become Xbox exclusive? Um, I think they should be timed exclusives, to be honest. I, I find it funny that when, I think it was about a year and a half ago, when people were talking about kind of the state of the Xbox One and the Xbox Series consoles... Uh, that was out and coming out and whatnot. It's like, well, Microsoft needs more exclusives. Microsoft, or the Xbox needs more exclusives. And, but when a timed exclusive were to come out on a console, uh, people would criticize it. Which, you know, doesn't really, seeing people saying both doesn't really make sense to me. I think timed exclusives are actually really cool because you get the benefits of an exclusive on a console, so you have a reason to buy that console that everyone says a console needs. And you also get the benefits of optimization for that game onto that console. Even though the specs nowadays really aren't that different. Um, they're both uh, relying on AMD chips and graphics. But, you know, there's still a little bit of optimization there. But you can rely on that optimization and then, you know, a year, two years down the road, eventually that game will come out on the other systems. And... You know, they can put whatever newer features and whatnot. So, I mean, you kind of get like, the benefits of both. It's like uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. I remember when that came out for the Xbox 360. It was originally an Xbox 360 exclusive. And then I think a year or two later, it eventually came out on PlayStation 3. And they had like the Joker, the extra Joker content. Or um, Resident Evil 4. That originally came out on GameCube. It was a GameCube exclusive. I think it was a year later. A year later or two years later, it came out on PlayStation 2. 
Uh, GameCube version was actually better, had the better graphics and whatnot, but, you know, PlayStation 2 version was still good. So, and... I think that's it for this video today. But yeah, I think I covered everything I want to cover. Um, yeah, Overwatch on Nintendo Switch. Uh, definitely, you know, if you ever have a chance to uh, play it, you know, uh, if you see it on sale or something like that, or if, if they ever do like a free weekend or something like that. I don't know if they if they do that for Nintendo Switch, but you know, maybe you got like a friend that has it and you want to try it out. Uh, give it a shot or definitely Paladins. But again, um, this is... I'm kind of, I keep jumping back to this, but like the whole sexual uh, sexual harassment allegations, they have at Blizzard at Activision Blizzard. I'm with Microsoft now owning them. I'm pretty confident they're going to get rid of all that crap, and now I can kind of give the company another chance. I'll still kind of wait and see though. But but anyway, um, Overwatch, if you have access to it, you know, give it a give it a shot. Um, Paladins is a great alternative. Definitely give Paladins a shot. Um, let's see if I got Paladins on here somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, there we are. There's Paladins. Definitely give Paladins a shot as well. I mean, Paladins is a free-to-play game anyway, so honestly, you should be giving that game a shot regardless. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, follow me on all things. Actually, not all. Follow me on most things, uh, social media. Uh, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you for coming to my video. If you would like to help my channel grow, please like and subscribe and please click on this little bell icon so you never miss a future video.